Hi students, welcome you all to the course that is Fabric Manufacturing Technology. In the last sessions we have discussed about the introduction to the weaving. Then we have discussed about the loom motions. So what are the different types of loom motions are there like primary motion, secondary motions and auxiliary mechanisms. So we have discussed in the last session, so we have discussed completely uh, the primary motions. Primary motions are nothing but shedding, picking and beta. Okay. And this session, particularly, we are going to discuss about, we are going to discuss about secondary mechanisms or secondary motions. So what are the secondary motions? The secondary motions are warp let off and fabric take off. So one is warp let off, let off, nothing but warp is delivering or unwinding from the warp beam and the fabric take up, fabric is going to take up with the help of these mechanisms. Okay, so we will discuss these two, what is exactly the warp let off and what is exactly the fabric take up mechanisms are. Okay, so we will start what are the contents uh, in the unit number 3 and what we have discussed and today's topics we are going to discuss about these 7 wheel take up motion and negative and positive let off motions so particularly ok so then in the next sessions we will discuss about the auxiliary motions and the loom production calculations ok so let us start about again to remind you that what are the loom motions so primary motions as I have given already we have discussed and now you can see here there are secondary motions. So the today's session we are going to discuss about the secondary motions that is fabric take up and warp let off fabric take up and warp let off ok. So you can see here the image which is already we have seen the a small animation video of this and you can observe that the let off of warp and you can see that the fabric take up. Let off of warp and there is a fabric take up. So these two mechanisms we have seen. How these two? Nothing but how the warp is going to withdraw or unwound from the warp beam. Okay. What is the mechanism involved? What is the technology involved in that? And also we are going to see that what is exactly the fabric take up or cloth winding mechanism so fabric take up mechanism how the fabric is going to already formed fabric how it is going to taken up and it is going to deliver to the cloth winding system okay so you will see here so you can see that there is a motor which is connected in the warp let up so this image particularly this image is uh, specific to uh, we have in the case of shuttle looms we have in the shuttle looms where we have individual motors to the warp let off and the fabric take up motions okay there is no like a gears and there is no uh, such uh, things uh, to control the warp let off and to control the fabric take up okay now you can observe that the two motors which are connected in the to the warp beam as well as the cloth roller you can observe that these two motors are connected into the controller okay so the synchronization between the fabric take up and the warp let off will be synchronous so you should not be stretched for example if the warp is not delivering or unwinding from the warp beam and uh, you are taking the cloth more so there is a stretch so you are going to apply the tension on the on the warp sheet so it is going to affect uh, the yarn properties it is going to affect the <coughs> yarn properties so that is why it is very important to have a synchronous speed which is there into in between the warp let off and the fabric take up mechanism okay so let off is to supply warp threads into the weaving what is exactly the let off is let off is nothing but the warp threads in the weaving zone so the supply of warp threads into the weaving zone that to particularly predetermined rate predetermined rate whatever the length you require predetermined rate nothing but what is the length requirement okay 
so I, every time it is going to mention your it is going to see that how much amount of warp sheet is to be delivered to the weaving zone it is going to be seen okay and this let off mechanism uh, is let off is particularly the supply warp threads in the weaving zone at a predetermined rate okay so what are the different types of let off motion sir what are the different types of let off motion sir so there are two different types of let off motions one is negative let off motion and the second one is positive let off motion we will discuss both in this session particularly what are the two methods of let off motion one is called as a negative let off motion and the second one is called as the positive let off motion okay now we will see that what is exactly the negative let off mechanism is negative let off mechanism so negative let off mechanism controlling the rotation of beam controlling the rotation of warp beam on a weaving machine where the beam is pulled rounded okay by the warp against a breaking force applied on the beam nothing but so simple in a negative let off motion we will see a small image you can observe that so there is a beam warp beam and there is a ruffle r that is capital r is nothing but what is the capital r that is beam ruffle beam ruffle nothing but beam on the beam we are winding na so at the central part of the beam is called as the beam ruffle central part of the beam is called as the beam ruffle okay on the beam ruffle only we are going to wind the warp on the beam ruffle only we are going to wind the warp in between the flanges in between the flanges so you can observe that in the image where uh, it is mentioned that uh, the disc there is a disc at the side of the beam so the disc is nothing but the flange of the beam there are two flanges of the beam why these two flanges are available because the warp is winding on the beam ruffle so one above the other layer we are winding so the edges of the warp threads should not be fall down it should not be fall down the edges of the yarns should not be fall down so if it is fall down then while unwinding it is very problematic so we cannot able to control the tension on the warp threads so in the different layers of the warp beam so that is why there are beam flanges and you can see that there is a beam ruffle on the beam ruffle we are winding the warp sheet now you can see that there is a chain which is connected to the above the beam ruffle nothing but there is a beam ruffle and we have uh, rounded a rope or chain and one side of the chain is connected to the machine weaving machine machine frame and the second end of the chain is connected to the to the what is that weight lever there is a lever so the lever which is connected one of the end is connected to the weighing lever and the edge of the lever which is having the fulcrum point there is a fulcrum point okay so there is a fulcrum point in the fulcrum point nothing but it is fixed point and just after the fulcrum point or the in between that on the weight lever we are going to fix the other end of the chain so that the beam is going to have some frictional contact in between the chain as well as in between the chain as well as the beam ruffle okay so around the beam ruffle we have winded so automatically there is a frictional contact in between the chain as well as the beam ruffle okay so after the around rotation of this so we have a dead weight which is applied at the end of the uh, at the end side of the uh, weight lever so that the proper tension is going to be applied on the beam ruffle okay so now what is exactly the warp let off is we are unwinding the warp uh, we are unwinding the warp from the warp beam we are unwinding so we are pulling the warp sheet from the beam so when we are pulling if the beam is having very free rotation there is no there is no break force or there is no stoppages are there it is freely rotating now if we are pulled slowly also it will freely rotate and the more amount of warp is going to be delivered or withdrawal from the 
warp beam. So there is no tension control in the warp sheet if we don't have like this such a type of mechanisms, particularly negative let off mechanism or positive let off mechanisms. Okay, so this is the dead weight where we are going to apply on the weight lever so that the tension which is going to be applied on the in between the chain as well as in between the chain and the beam ruffle the frictional contact is going to be there okay so now we have a small derivation of this how this how the frictional force is to be applied so that the tension on the warp sheet that is t is nothing but the tension on the warp sheet t is nothing but tension on the warp sheet and you can see that the ts and tt it is there ts and tt T is nothing but tension at slack side and TT nothing but tension at the tight side of the chain. Okay, so tension at the slack side of the chain and tension of the uh, tension in the chain on slack side and the tight side. Okay, you can see that the notations are what are the notations we have given in the image. I have explained here. You can see that F is nothing but frictional force which is uh, at the beam ruffle which is applied on the beam ruffle okay and t is nothing but tension in the warp sheet okay now t r nothing but t nothing but tension on the warp sheet and the r is nothing but radius of the warp beam e is directly proportional to directionally proportional to the frictional force applied on to the warp sheet and the beam ruffle radius okay so t r is equal to f r t r is equal to f r Okay, now you can see that TR is equal to FR, F nothing but what is F? Frictional force at the beam ruffle. So there is a frictional force, two frictional forces that is TS minus TT. So TR is equal to now you can substitute this TS minus TT. Okay, TT minus TS on the given formula so that you can get TT divided by TS is equal to E mu theta. Okay, E mu theta. Okay, you mu nothing but coefficient of friction between the chain and the beam ruffle. Theta is nothing but the angle of warp taken by the chain. Okay, so you can see that the derivation at the final stage of this derivation, T is T is proportional to the Y by R. So nothing but T is indirectly proportional to the R that is radius of the beam. So you can see that the radius of the warp beam. Okay, T is indirectly proportional or inversely proportional to the R. T is inversely proportional to the R. You can see that the equation 5 that is as I told T is T is directly proportional to Y by R. Now Y is nothing but in between the uh, fulcrum point to the dead weight. Y is the distance between the fulcrum point to the dead weight. So that is the distance. So distance divided by R radius of the beam. So whenever the radius of the beam is changing, we have to change the distance so that the tension on the warp sheet is going to be controlled. Now you can see here equation 5 shows that the condition needed to achieve a constant warp tension. We should maintain the constant warp tension. That is why we are changing the distance between the fulcrum point and the dead weight so that we can control the tension on the warp sheet okay so if you control if you are not control the tension on the warp sheet then again the peak spacing is going to vary or the fabric falls also going to comes okay so thus the beam radius r reduces the distance y must be reduced r beam radius nothing beam radius is reducing nothing but the distance between the fulcrum point to the dead weight that is y should be reduced by moving the weight towards the fulcrum H. So in regular intervals to balance the warp tension, to balance the warp tension, we are going to change regularly the dead weight from the end position to towards the fulcrum point, towards the fulcrum point that is H, towards the fulcrum point that is H. So every time the weaver job, this is also one of the job of the weaver, so every time the weaver is going to see that what is the tension on the warp sheet and he is going to change the dead weight position on the lever that is weight lever so that he can able to control the warp sheet continuously. Otherwise the control of warp sheet 
the tension on the warp sheet cannot be controlled properly. For example, if the beam radius decreases by 25%, the distance y must be reduced by 25%. Okay. For example, 50% radius is reduced. 50% nothing but the distance between the fulcrum point to the y, y, y uh, uh, dead weight is uh, say for example 20 cm. So 50% radius is reduced, beam radius. Then this 20 cm position we need to reduce into 10. So nothing but the reduction percentage should be equal. If it is reducing, you need to reduce it. So at the starting of the beam, beam radius is bigger. So again, uh, the waver has to change the dead weight position from the from the lowest cadre to the end of the fulcrum point. That is end of the particular lever. Okay. So he has to change first uh, at the beam time as well as regular intervals. He has to change the position of the dead weight on the weight lever so that he can able to control the warp tension in warp beam. Then you can see the graphical representation. So there are two graphs which are there. In x-axis you can observe that um, warp beam radius, that is warp beam radius in centimeters. So like a 0, 2, 4, like 22 centimeters is the warp beam radius. And you can see that y-axis warp tension that is in newtons we have given. So warp tension in newtons y-axis, x-axis warp beam radius. For example, for example, without weight shifting, without weight shifting, if you measure the tension on the warp sheet, if you measure the tension on the warp sheet, at the, at the starting of the beam, at the starting of the beam nothing but, so the beam diameter is more, around 20 centimeters is the beam diameter, for example. So at the starting time beam radius is more and slowly, if the diameter is reducing and waver is not shifting the dead weight, then what will happen? You can observe that the graph is rising up. Nothing but tension on the warp sheet, tension on the warp sheet is gradually, it is increasing, gradually it is increasing. So, if it is increased, goes on increasing, then the stretch on the warp sheet is going to be occurred. So, if the stretch is occurred, warp breaks also going to increase. Along with that, the fabric properties are going to be changed. So, that is why what is our requirement is, we require to maintain the warp tension throughout the beam completion. Nothing but, so the starting 20 centimeters is the beam diameter radius. Okay. So, beam radius is 20 centimeters. So, so continuously, regularly, the weaver has to change the dead weight position on the weight lever so that he can able to maintain the tension on the warp completely from the starting of the beam to the ending of the beam. Okay, so that is why if if we shift the weight weight on the weighing lever so you can get the proper tension on the warp sheet. Approximately it is like a 500 to the 550 is the range where we are going to maintain the warp tension in the warp beam. Okay. So that is the major thing. How and what is the effect? If you have not shifted the dead weight, if you have shifted the dead weight, what is the tension levels are? Okay. You need to maintain the tension. So completely throughout the completion of the beam, you need to maintain the same level of warp tension. Okay. So that the yarn properties will not be lost and the fabric quality will not be deteriorated. Weaving efficiency also going to get more. So because of the because of the tension is increasing gradually, in that case, the breakages are going to become more. If the warp breakages are more, you cannot able to get the weaving machine efficiency. If you are not get the weaving machine efficiency, automatically your productivity of the department is going to lost. Okay. So there are so from these there are so many factors, so many things are going to be affected. That is why you need to control the warp tension. Okay. Then we will look after the second one that is positive let off motion. There is a positive let off motion. There is a, you can see that there are uh, parts which are there. So you can see that there is a warm and warm wheel is there. Warm and warm wheel. So from warm and warm wheel, 
there is a drive which is coming to the pulleys so from the pulleys the liver there is a l liver at the end of the l liver we have a dead weight at the end of the l liver we have a dead weight so by this dead weight so what will happen is whenever the beam radius is reducing whenever the beam radius is going to reduce the backrest position is going to be varied backrest position is going to be varied so whenever the beam radius is reducing backrest is going to slowly it is going to down coming down so that you can maintain the you can maintain the warp tension on the warp sheet you can maintain the tension on the warp sheet okay so what is happening is there is a worm and worm wheel so from worm and worm wheel there is a drive which is coming to the pulleys and the pulleys are generally having the l lever and dead weight so the, this lever is connected to the backrest mechanism whenever the beam radius is reducing you can see that so whenever the radius is reducing there is a red there is a red roller which is measuring continuously the beam radius so the variable pulley's distance is going to vary once it is varied the lever position is going to be varied once the lever position is varied now the backrest mechanism is going to comes down slowly whenever the beam radius is going to reduce gradually reduce so that it can be maintained uniformly throughout the warp completion the yarn tension is going to be maintained throughout the completion of the beam okay so this is how the positive let off motion is going to work next we will go to the particularly we'll move on to the take down mechanisms or take up mechanisms okay so this explanation whatever is shown is like i have explained for the positive let off motion what is the explanation is like you can see that how it is going to be work okay now we will move on to the fabric take up fabric take up or fabric take down mechanism fabric take up or fabric take down mechanism we will see what is exactly this fabric take down is take up mechanism or take up motion withdraws the cloth from the weaving area at a constant rate at a constant rate so at as as to give a required pick spacing as to give a required pick spacing that is pick per inch or pick per centimeter and then winds on to the cloth roller okay so the pick spacing is going to be depends upon the what is the take up winding speed or take down speed is if you increase the take down speed and if you increase the warp let off speed also in that case what will happen you are inserting the number of picks very less so the pick to pick gap is going to be more nothing but picks per 1 inch picks per 1 cm or picks per 1 inch is going to very low when when you are running the take up mechanism and the let off mechanism is very fast nothing but fabric you are taking very fastly if you are not taking the fabric still the fell of the cloth is there only but then in that case what will happen the bit up mechanism will beat the weft yarn towards the fell of the cloth so more so the more number of weft threads are going to be inserted in a particular unit area like picks per 1 cm or picks per inch okay so that is the major thing okay now you can observe that what is exactly this is like there is a fell of the cloth and there is a front rest and there are take up beam then felt cover plate so that the frictional contact in between the roller and the cloth will be there so that after that there is a d that is crease board which is going to remove if any creases are forming in the while take up mechanism or while while the fabric formation it is going to be remove the creases and after that the fabric is going to wind into the cloth roller that is e the cloth roller so this is the take up mechanism particularly okay so there is a take up mechanism which is going to withdraw the fabric from the fell of the cloth in a predetermined length then you can see here uh, what is exactly the uh, take up mechanism is you can see that there is a, <clears throat> a drive which is coming to the ratchet okay and from the ratchet the drive is going to transfer into the take up roller 
from the ratchet wheel the drive is going to transfer to the take up roller so that the take up roller is going to take the fell of the cloth from uh, cloth from the fell of the cloth okay so the cloth is going to take down from the fell of the cloth okay so this is one of the mechanism this is like a conventional type of uh, <coughs> take up mechanism and we will see that what is the positive take up mechanism positive type of take up mechanism positive take up mechanisms are classified into different means okay so the positive take up motion gets transmitted the take up roller directly through gear train so there is a gear train through the gear train the motion is going to transfer to the take up roller okay so there are different types of positive take ups are uh, there so here you can see that this is called as the seven wheel take up motion this is called as the seven wheel take up motion you can count that there are seven gear wheels are present in the mechanism you can see that a b c d e f g you can see that there are seven different types of wheels are there now a is nothing but ratchet wheel a is nothing but the ratchet wheel so from the slave word from the slave word so slave word is nothing but whenever the newly inserted pick is beaten up towards the fell of the cloth then after completion the motion has to transfer into the take up roller okay so now what is exactly this motion and how it is going to transfer now there is a ratchet wheel and there is a pushing pawn which is fixed on the slave word so the pushing power will push one teeth revolution of the ratchet so a is nothing but the ratchet wheel so the <coughs> pushing power is going to push the ratchet wheel one teeth revolution so every time one teeth revolution for one pick one teeth revolution so there is a standard wheel that is b so the motion will transfer into the standard wheel and there is a change wheel okay so out of this total seven wheels six wheels number of teeth are standard there is no change in the teeth number of teeth in the wheel okay only the change is change wheel teeth are going to be varied whenever you required whenever you change you want to change the number of picks per 1 inches okay so <clears throat> this seven wheel take up motion you can see that there is a ratchet and there is a ratchet wheel there is a ratchet wheel shaft which is on the ratchet wheel shaft we have a standard wheel the standard wheel will drive the motion or give the drive to the change wheel and on the change wheel we have a change pinion so from the change pinion it will be transferred into the stud wheel stud wheel to the stud wheel pinion so stud wheel pinion to the emery roller end wheel emery roller end wheel that is g okay so you can see here the actual picture of how these seven wheels are fixed there is a there is a ratchet from the ratchet ratchet to the standard wheel standard wheel to the change wheel change wheel to change pinion change pinion to stud wheel stud pinion stud pinion to the emery roller end wheel so emery roller end wheel is going to actually the motion will give to the emery roller end wheel to take the fabric from the fell of the cloth to take the fabric from the fell of the cloth okay so now you can see that what is exactly the number of teeth sir now why this seven wheel take up motion is very very preferable is because so simple if you want to change the pix per inch for example 78 is your pix per inch 78 pix per 1 inch is there if you want to change 80 so directly your change wheel pins so change wheel teeth if you keep 80 80 teeth wheel you will get 80 picks per 1 inch because because there is a <coughs> there is a a uh, simple calculation about the how many actual revolutions or spacing has to be done by the seven wheel take up motion is so you can see that the, there are different steps so how we can identify the constant value so you can see that the step 1 when the pawn pulls one tooth revolution 
then the number of rotations made by the emery roller end wheel is we are going to calculate so number of teeth on pawl ratchet wheel divided by then multiplied by standard wheel divided by change wheel change pinion to the stud wheel stud pinion to the emery roller end wheel diameter so number of teeth if you keep all these things you will get the actual number of rotations made by the emery roller end wheel you can get so generally if x x is nothing but the change wheel if it is det not determined so it is not given so x is not given so we are going to get a constant that is 0.0674 divided by x okay so that many number of revolutions are going to be made by the emery roller end wheel and in number 2 what we are going to do is step number 2 so the length of cloth wound on the cloth for one pick in inches how many inches are going to be wound so you can see that 1.0144 divided by x number of inches are going to wind the cloth okay so now picks per inch how we can calculate so 0.9854 is going to come divided by 1 is the 1 <coughs> 1 is going to be given 1 divided by 1.0144 multiplied by x that is number of teeth on the change wheel you can get the value that is 0.9589858 9858 multiplied by number of teeth in a change wheel is okay so by considering the number of teeth on change wheel x as one tooth so then theoretical dividend is 0.9858 that is equal to 1 okay so generally it is not equal but the four digits are there so we are going to allowing the points 1.5 percentage of contraction of the fabric then practical dividend you can get it uh, that is 1.0006 that is equal to 1 so the practical dividend is 1 that is why whenever if you want to change the number of teeth in number of picks per picks per 1 inch if you want to change so picks per inch is equal to your number of teeth in the change okay because your practical dividend is 1 so if your dividend is 1 you can get the number of teeth okay so that is why directly if you want fix per inch 82 you can go for 82 teeth of change wheel in the seven wheel take up portion so that you will get the equal fix spacing and 78 or 82 picks per 1 inch in the fabric okay so that is the seven wheel take up motion so particularly this session we have discussed about what is exactly the uh, warp plate of mo motions and fabric take up motions are there okay so particularly in warp plate of we have discussed about negative warp plate of and positive warp plate of and we have discussed about the uh, take up motions particularly we have discussed about the uh, positive take up motion that to seven wheel take up motion we have discussed okay so we will watch small videos of this negative let off or positive let off and the uh, fabric take up motions so that you will get an idea okay so you please watch the videos okay now this is a positive intermittent motion the slay stud oscillates to and fro the take up lever also moves similarly to and fro when the take up lever moves to the right the pawl pulls one tooth of the ratchet wheel This happens when the crank is at the front center. This action rotates the other wheels and finally the emery roller.
The cloth roller in contact with the emery roller then rotates and takes up the cloth. This mechanism is positive and involves seven wheels. The picks per inch in the fabric can be altered by using the appropriate change wheel. This mechanism is popular in industry because the number of teeth in the change wheel directly indicates the number of picks per inch in the cloth. Okay, so I think uh, you have gone through the video, so uh, you have understood what are the secondary motions are. Okay, so in the next session we are going to discuss, we will discuss about the auxiliary motions or auxiliary mechanisms, okay, which are there in the shuttle loom or uh, shuttle, shuttle looms or shuttle less looms are, okay. So, some of the auxiliary motions are available in both the cases and some of the mechanisms are not there or which is a modified versions or electronic uh, versions are available in the shuttle less looms. There are small changes but the auxiliary mechanisms are uh, common for the shuttle looms and the shuttle less looms uh, to get good quality and very good efficiency and higher productivity as well as very good qu fabric quality okay so this is regarding this session so for the till the next session okay thanks for listening bye